Skateboarders tend to share a lot of the same experiences. No matter where you're from or who your family is, if you're a skateboarder, there's certain things that are just naturally relatable. Things like going on skate trips or watching skate videos with your friends are universal things that most skateboarders do regardless of their background. With that said, growing up as a broke skateboarder specifically definitely comes with its own set of unique experiences that not all skaters have to deal with. In this video, we're going to go over a few things that only broke skaters understand. I grew up as a broke skateboarder myself, so these are all things that I've experienced firsthand, but if you feel like anything was left out, or if you have any tips to any of these problems, go ahead and leave it in the comments, do me a favor and leave a like on the video, check out the links in the description, and with that said, let's get right into it. Actually, before we do, I want to thank ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. ButcherBox provides you with high quality meat delivered straight to your door. They have every type of meat that you can imagine, such as free range organic chicken, pork that's raised crate free, and wild caught seafood. But right now, they have a special offer where they're giving new members two free pounds of grass fed ground beef in every box for the lifetime of their membership. ButcherBox sources from farmers and fishermen who meet the highest standards of quality. You choose the frequency that you want to receive boxes and you get the option of customizing your own box or choosing one that they curate for you. They ship orders at peak freshness in an eco-friendly 100% recyclable box and their average cost is less than $6 per meal, which is a pretty good deal. Again, if you enjoy eating good quality food, go to the link in the description to get two free pounds of 100% grass-fed ground beef in every box for the lifetime of your membership. Thanks again to ButcherBox for sponsoring the video, and now let's get into it. So first on the list is not having a ride to the skate park. This is definitely one of the most frustrating things about being a poor skateboarder because even though some of the other problems can be annoying, most of them don't prevent you from actually skating. It's always really bummy when all of your friends are going to the skate park and you'd love to be able to go as well, but the only reason why you can't is because you don't have a ride. A lot of people from lower income families don't have a steady source of transportation, and if they happen to live in a rural area, then public transportation isn't really an option either. When I was a kid, I lived about 25 minutes from the nearest skate park, and my parents usually work pretty late, so finding a ride during the week was pretty hard. I had to beg distant family members for a ride, or try to convince one of my friend's parents for a ride, but for the most part, until I got my license, I pretty much never got to skate during the week. If you happen to have a friend who doesn't have a ride to the skate park, always try to look out for them and give them a ride if possible, because for some people, finding rides can be pretty tough. Not having a ride to the skate park was for sure the thing that I hated most as a kid, but if you think there's something that's worse, then definitely leave it in the comments. For number two, we have skating a beat up board. Skateboards naturally take a lot of damage just from normal everyday use, but when you grow up as a broke skater, you almost always have the worst board at the park. Other skaters might have normal scuffs on the bottom of their board, and maybe a chip if they've been skating it for a while, but a broke skater's board is on a completely different level. These boards always have razor tail, the grip tape looks absolutely disgusting, sometimes they're a little waterlogged, and there's guaranteed to be multiple chips on the nose and tail. When you're a skateboarder without a lot of money, you have to really try to make boards last for as long as you can. This means that your boards get way more worn out, but you just have to make do with what you have. Spending $50 on a board was a big deal as a kid, and you'd be lucky if you could afford one every few months, so skating a beat up board was kind of the norm. Number three on the list is not being able to afford Camp Woodward. For those who don't know, Camp Woodward is basically a skater's dream summer camp. It has around 20 different skate parks, all of which are extremely well built, they constantly have pros visiting the parks, and they also have normal summer camp activities. Essentially every kid who skates would love to go to Camp Woodward, but unfortunately, most broke skaters just can't afford it. It cost around $1,600 to go for a week, not including travel expenses, and if you were a broke skateboarder growing up, spending that much money on summer camp wasn't even something that your parents would consider. Now for me, the good news is that since most of my friends were also poor, we at least didn't have to see other people in our group go off to have the best week ever while we stayed at our local park, but it still would have been nice to go. 
So moving on, we have skating terrible shoes. Skateboarders in general are known for having some pretty beat up shoes, but when you grow up as a broke skater, your shoes get so bad that they're almost unrecognizable. Using shugu and tape become a routine thing because you have to really get as much life out of your shoes as you can. This means constantly repairing your shoes and doing whatever you can to keep them going for as long as possible. In some cases, I've seen people with skate shoes that had more shugu than actual shoe material. Having messed up skate shoes might seem like something that applies to skaters in general, but any truly broke skater will tell you that there's definitely levels to it, and actual broke skaters are usually acting out of necessity because they really can't afford another pair. Next on the list is having a bad phone. When it comes to skateboarding, for the most part, the type of phone you have doesn't really matter. People at the skate park aren't going to care what kind of phone you have, so as long as you like it, that's all that really counts. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. With that in mind, the one time it can be a problem is when it comes to filming clips. Most of these newer phones have crazy 8K cameras with four different lenses built in and tons of different filming modes, but if you grow up as a broke skater, then you probably have the most basic phone possible. If filming wasn't such a big part of skateboarding, this wouldn't be a problem at all, but when you want to get clips and you have a phone that films worse than a calculator, it's definitely annoying to deal with. Usually the only way to solve this is by borrowing one of your friend's newer phones, that way you can actually get a clip that doesn't look like it was filmed on a literal potato. This is a bit of a first world problem because even if you're a broke skater with a five year old smartphone, you're still doing far better than a lot of other people. But then again, you could say the same thing about pretty much everything on the list. Next, we have skating hand-me-down gear. In skateboarding culture, giving old gear to other skaters is a common occurrence. One of the things that makes the skateboarding community so great is that people are always down to help each other out, and hooking your friends up with your old gear once you get some new stuff is somewhat the standard. Skating hand-me-down gear isn't just exclusive to broke skaters, but broke skaters definitely rely on it a lot more than other people. For example, a normal skater might try out a set of used wheels that their friend gives them so they can decide if they want to buy their own set. A broke skater, on the other hand, will literally have seven different bearings in their wheels along with a hand-me-down deck and maybe even some partially used shoes that their friend gave them simply because they can't afford anything else. Since low-income skaters can't afford new products that often, getting hand-me-down gear is one of the only ways they get new stuff. I can't speak for all skate parks, but at my local park growing up, when one person got a new board, their old board would go to another person, and that person's old board would go to another person. Again, skating hand-me-down gear is something that all skaters do at some point, but when you grow up as a broke skater, you definitely rely on it a lot more. I don't even know what brand it is. My friend just lent it to me. Next on the list, we have making DIY ramps. When you're a broke skater who just wants something to skate, you gotta make things happen by any means necessary. If you don't have much money, going online and buying a $3,000 mini ramp isn't an option, so you have to get a little creative. Typically, this means finding pieces of scrap wood that you can use to build an obstacle that's at least somewhat skatable. Sure, you might not be able to build some polished mini ramp or a perfect flat bar for your driveway, but skaters are really resourceful and an obstacle doesn't have to be perfect to be fun. Growing up as a broke skater, there were plenty of annoying things that I hated dealing with, but building DIY ramps was actually pretty fun. Looking back, they definitely weren't that great, but we always had a fun time both building and skating them. Up next, we have buying the cheapest gear possible. The average skater might not buy new gear all the time, but when they do, they at least buy whatever they want based on their own preference and style. When it comes to broke skaters, shopping for the best brands usually isn't a thing, and you normally end up buying the cheapest option possible. This means buying whatever is on sale and the cheapest options you can afford. There's nothing necessarily wrong with skating cheaper brands, and it's not like other skaters are going to pick on you for it, but a lot of off-brand gear does break easier, and it also doesn't work as well. Next up, we have re-wearing the same skate clothes. Some skaters re-wear the same fit because they like it, and some skaters do it because they're too lazy to do laundry, but when it comes to broke skaters, the reason why they do it is because it's the only option they have. 
a lot of broke skaters might only have one or two pairs of skate pants and a handful of t-shirts, so mixing up their fit every day for a new Instagram edit isn't exactly possible. This isn't the worst downside to being a broke skater, but it is something that a lot of broke skaters deal with. Next up is always eating the cheapest food you can find. When you're a broke skater and you're out with your friends or on a trip, you have to find a way to buy food for as cheap as possible. Sometimes this means buying gas station food or sticking to the dollar menu or just buying some cheap food on the street. For example, I found a way to hack the quarter game at Taco Bell and I basically used that as a way to get a free burrito every time I went. There's also some more ethically questionable stuff that my friends and I would do to get food, which I don't recommend, but the point is, when you're a broke skater, you're always trying to find some food for cheap. Growing up as a broke skater comes with a ton of challenges that other skaters don't always know about. There are a lot of parallels between normal skaters and broke skaters, but when you don't have money, you definitely have to be a lot more resourceful and creative. These are just a few of the things that I dealt with as a broke skater, but if you think anything was left off the list, or if you have any tips or tricks of your own, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Do me a favor and leave a like on the video. Check out the links in the description. And with that said, thanks for watching.